welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at camera settings that we need for photographing birds. And before I forget, if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. And if you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Let's get started. Now for settings on my camera, I usually shoot in aperture mode. And I'm going to choose an aperture between like 11 and 20. Uh, and the reason being is I want to, I, I, I'm trying to compromise. I want to let enough light through where I can get a fast shutter speed. But I also need to have a large enough focus range that if the bird's moving that I'll have a, a better chance of getting a focus on them. So the 3D focus on the Nikon is going to try to predict where the bird's going to go and focus on it. But you want to increase your chances as much as you can because nothing is perfect. So the larger your focus range, i.e. the bigger your f-stop number, the better chance you have of getting the bird in focus. Um, I'm also shooting, so I'm using a long focal length. I've got a Sigma 150 through 600 millimeter lens. And so I'm going to use a high shutter speed to basically make sure I don't have any camera shake. And then if the bird's moving, I can stop the motion. Um, I'm also going to use a continuous mode, and I'm going to use a, probably a, a high continuous mode to shoot as many frames as possible, because you're going to see a bird, you're going to get, especially like a kingfisher, you're going to get just a little bit of time to shoot him, and then he's going to move, and you want to take as many frames as possible, so if he's moving his head around, you'll get a good picture somewhere in there. Okay, I just wanted to talk briefly about the depth of field, or depth of focus, or whatever you some people call it one, some people call it the other, but it's really the amount, the depth of focus or how much area that we have that's focused. And this is a really important concept for you to understand whenever you're actually photographing moving objects, whether it be sports photography or wildlife or whatever it may be. And we also use it in landscape photography as well to capture the entire landscape and side of focus. So with focus, we have a fixation point that we're focusing on the subject, and that, that is the primary point of focus. But we also have a near point focus point and a far point focus point. And the near point focus point is the point that is closest to us, that's still in focus in front of that object we're our subject. And the, and the far point is the area behind the subject that is still in focus. So as we can see in this graphic, when we use a low f-stop number, which means we have a larger aperture, our aperture is open, that our depth of focus is much narrower, as we can see in the top of this graphic that I have here. And if we use a high f-stop number, when we have a small aperture, our aperture is closed, our depth of focus, or our depth of field is much larger. So what's this really mean to us? So on my Nikon D750, if I'm using my Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, if I use the maximum focal length on this, on the, on the lens, which is 600 millimeters, and my f-stop's 4.0, and I'm shooting something that's 50 meters away, well, I only have a depth of field in front of the object that's 0.81 meters, and I have a depth of field behind the object of 0.84 meters. So I have roughly about a 1.6 millimeter area that will be in focus. Now if I bump my f-stop up to f10, now I will have almost 2 meters of, of depth of field in front of my subject, as well as a little over 2, milli, two meters of depth of field behind my subject. And if I increase my f-stop to f16, that increase, increases my depth of field in front of the subject to 3 meters, and my depth of field behind the subject to 3.5 meters. So I get a lot more depth of field, and if I'm trying to shoot a bird, he's moving really fast towards me or away from me, that gives me an extra you know, 6.5 meters of focal space that I have to work with. Now to illustrate this point, let's look at the picture of this gannet that I shot. So I shot this at f16 and my shutter speed was 1 500th of a second so I could actually capture the movement without any blur. The f16 gives me 
like we talked about, quite a bit of depth of focus. And I set my camera up so that the ISO would adjust to make sure that the image was exposed correctly. So again, it can fly approximately 65 kilometers per hour. That's approaching, I mean, if he's coming directly towards me, that'll be at 18 meters per second. So having about a 10 meter depth of field for the focus is, is gonna make my job a lot easier when I'm trying to photograph something that's moving this fast. You wanna have a well-lit day if you're shooting birds in motion. So I've, I've shot some, I mean, when it's not as great, but I, over here behind me, Kingfisher will land there a lot, but it's off in the shade, and especially later in the day when the sun's behind the trees, and, and so I'm not going to get as good light. And like I said, we're trying to compromise between a f-stop that's going to allow me to have a large focus range and a shutter speed that's going to be fast enough to capture the action. I don't really need to struggle with light, so I'm looking for a good sunny day. And today it's like, there's like a big cloud coming in right now, but it was kind of partly cloudy today, but I get moments of decent sunlight, so so that works out well. Uh, the last thing is, so I, I, I don't want to take a chance on underexposing or overexposing due to me uh, basically trying to shoot a high shutter speed with uh, the aperture that I'm using. So on the Nikon, which I, I know some other cameras probably do this, but I'm familiar with the Nikon D750 and some of the Pentax line. Um, what I end up doing is I set my, inside there, I have like a, an auto ISO setting. And I can tell it that it can, it's, it can use any shutter speed it wants, but nothing below 1 500th of a second. And sometimes I'll go down to like 1 300th of a second, but that's becoming in the risky area for me, in my opinion. So if it needs to drop below 1 500th of a second, the ISO will adjust. And I would rather shoot a picture and make sure I've got a decent shutter speed at a high ISO and then deal with any grain in the picture post-production then take a chance on actually missing the photograph so so just to sum it up I'm running a moderate aperture somewhere between f11 and f18 f20 fast shutter speed if you're using especially if you're using a long focal length anything over 400 you're going to want a 400 millimeter focal length you're going to want to have one five hundredth of a second or better on your shutter speed to make sure that you don't have any camera shake and the bird's going to be moving so you need to be able to freeze that try to set your auto iso up so your iso will compensate if your shutter speed's going to be too low and then Finally, make sure that you, you have a good day with good light and you should have a good, good time out shooting. And then study the birds that you're going to be actually shooting to make sure you have the optimal chance of getting a photograph of them. Anyway, uh, this is just a quick video on my settings for the, for the doing bird photography. I hope this was useful to somebody. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you live in, in the UK, Barnwell Park, and there's parks all over the UK and even in the States, but they have some here that are set up with bird hides. Go take advantage of them and, and you know, enjoy your time out. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. If you would, give me a like and a subscribe down below if you like this video and if you want to see more. So, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.